Hello, welcome to Literary Life and welcome to this video where I'm going to share with you an overview of the five books that are currently shortlisted for the Republic of Consciousness Prize for the UK and Ireland. This is a prize that is focused on small presses. Now, the winner is being announced tomorrow. I'm super excited. I have read uh, most of the five books. There's one book I'm still working on, uh, so going to try to get through that before the announcement tomorrow. But I have already formulated my opinion on what I've read so far, um, so I will just caveat that. But I am going to tell you the book I hope wins, and I do have a runner-up. Um, so let's get rolling. I'm going to give you a quick overview, like I said, of each book. And then um, at the end, I will let you know my hopeful winner tomorrow. Now, tomorrow, I'm not sure if the event is being live streamed or not. It's occurring in London, which is going to end up being 1 p.m. Central Standard Time in the U.S. So I will either look for a live stream if it's available, because I would love to be there in the moment um, and see the readings and then the announcement but otherwise, I will just have to wait for them to push out um, publicly who the winner is. And then I will share with you all that um, hopefully tomorrow as well. All right, so let's talk about these five books. First book we have Set in Brazil. This is of Cattle and Men by Charco Press. Now, this book is set on a farm slaughterhouse. Um, we are looking at primarily cattle that are being slaughtered. Our protagonist is one of those workers on the farm, and he is the one that renders the cattle unconscious um, prior to their being um, their life being ended. And what is going on is sort of a mystical threat that is occurring in, in this setting. Um, we are unsure what it is, but it is making the humans and the cattle themselves very uncomfortable. Um, and so there is definitely a very interesting flavor. I don't think flavor is the right word, but something atmospheric <laughs> that this book uh, brings to the reader and to the setting as well within the book. So that is one of the selections there. For me, this was a four-star read. All right, now... The Cameron, and I hope I'm not mispronouncing that. This book was published by, is it Scribe, I think? This particular, Scotland Street Press, excuse me, Scotland Street Press. So this particular book um, is set in Belarus, where we are in a prison. It is a collection of 100, 100 short stories. And when I say short, I mean some of them are a page, some of them are up to three pages, um, what's particularly interesting about this is that the author himself is currently incarcerated in Belarus uh, due to his being part of the resistance movement there. Um, he is an international attorney uh, at the time of the publication, I believe as up far up to now, he is currently incarcerated. And um, he was somehow able to sneak these short stories out of the prison and his wife and sister went ahead and moved forward with publication of them. The short stories are going to cover a bunch of just moments um, it, within the prison environment, really between very interpersonally focused. So between the prisoners themselves or the prisoners and the guard. Um, for me, this was a three-star read, which means I liked it. I thought it was a good book. Um, I am very curious to learn more about how the situation impacted the structure of the story. So I am hoping this is one where the author is able to leave the prison and then share the story about the creation of these. I would love to learn more about the writing of those. All right, the next book, we are back in um, Brazil, and this one is Out of Earth, um, and it is published by, I keep forgetting the publishers, Boiler House Press. Um, so this particular book follows four generations of women, a family in Brazil, and it is going to, it explores uh, the, the dynamics that they face being females in their society, um, so it's very female male focused and um, we are also going to see multi-generational but at different ages at the same point in time. So we will see the challenges that the older women face as well as the younger women face. 
Um, I had a hard time with this book. I actually did DNF it. I really struggled to follow to follow what was happening, to follow who the characters were. Um, it felt very disjointed to me. So I read, I forget if it was 100 pages, 60 some pages. And then I just, I just had to stop because I wasn't, I, I was getting snippets of meaningful narrative. Um, so for me, this one was a huge, huge struggle. So one star read for me. This is another one that has very small um, snippets of books. So if you are looking for a book that has like chunks um, and switches a lot, you know, these two books both have, I think, a very easy to consume format in that regard. Um, okay, the next book, we are going to go to South Africa, a country within Africa, of course. And we are looking at Avenues by Train. This book, I just want to show you guys how beautiful the edition of this book is. I am absolutely in love. So I cannot imagine, I don't know what the price point is to put that kind of artwork into a, um, a book, especially for small presses. But as a reader, I so fell in love with this book visually. And this is a book that I, I just, I'm attached to because of the content and then very much because of the artistic work. It's one that it's like, I, I just, I want to own it. Like I would be sad if I got this from the library and loved it and then saw how beautiful it was. This is published by the Cassava Republic. So I just want to give them a shout out to just the beautiful quality of their publication outside of the wonderful storytelling I love this book. This was a four, 4.5 star read for me. So in Avenues by Train, like I said, we're in South Africa and our main, our protagonist is a boy that we are going to meet when he is younger. Um, we're going to get to know some of his social group. We're going to get to know his family, his parents and older sister somewhat. Um, but he is going to experience a tragedy. His And this is in the description. Um, a friend of his is killed. He is going to have witnessed that, and we are then going to follow him into adulthood when he has left his very rural town, gone into a nearby city environment, um, and he is grappling with a number of things, but heavily with the loss of his friend and the, the trauma associated with that, but also with a number of the um, just challenges that that area faces due to poverty. We are also going to get two different points of view briefly in the book. So the bulk of the time we are with our protagonist, but his older sister, we're going to get her perspective um, when she has moved out to the city. And then there is a younger woman, girl, who is a prostitute in that city. And we're going to get her perspective for a spell as well. This book is going to weave in spirituality, a lot of the spiritual culture and uh, the general culture of that area. And there is some, I'm going to say, creative storytelling here where we shift from a very straightforward narrative that you experience in most books to something that is a, um, a, a lot more artful. But I did not find it as disorienting as I did in like Out of Earth, for example, where I just could not follow the, the way of the storytelling. Um, so this was a book that kept me thoroughly engaged, absolutely loved. Now, the last book is the one that I am still reading. Um, the End of August by You, Mary. Now, this book was written in Japanese, but the author is Korean. And this is a book that is based on her own family. One of the things I appreciated that I, I, I just absolutely loved, and I wish every book would do this because this is exactly what I end up doing, is she gave us a family tree. So I have a point of reference um, that has been extremely helpful because I am struggling quite a bit in following what is happening with this book as well. Um, not as much as Out of Earth, though. So there is one of the things I've noticed in all of these books um, is there is a unique way of telling a story. They, The authors in all of them are definitely um, creative in the way that they're sharing their narration, narrating for the reader. And I've, I've really enjoyed that, even though even the ways I've struggled with it. 
I don't think that there any of these books are the typical experience I have had, you know, in reading. Um, and I think that was particularly interesting. I don't know if that was intentional or or just happened to be that way. This book, when it starts out, our main character is a um, marathon runner, Korean, who's running for the Japanese Olympics. And so this book is going to cover multiple generations of her family in the time of the Japanese occupation in Korea into the present time. She, in prepping for running this marathon, is going to have consulted with her ancestors um, and like a, a spirit world and is part of that exercise I think even a neighbor comes into contact with her. When you start into the book, the book is framed up almost like a play where you have like different names and then their dialogue and they're having conversations. Um, what I am struggling with is I don't know what some of the words mean. So it's one of the things where for I really appreciate when the translators will give us footnotes with some context. I have found that extremely helpful and I think that's something I need here. I am doing some Googling um, to try to bridge that knowledge gap for myself, but it is leaving me feeling lost. And the fact that this book is 700 pages and then I'm having to do this side work, it is making it much more of a heavy lift. Um, so that one for me is definitely getting in the way of me being able to just consume the story and be get into the story, actually feel a part of it, um, having it come to life in my mind. Uh, so the beginning I, I found very disorienting. And then I don't know if it's about 50 pages in, but we shift into more of a traditional narrative that has a linear theme. Um, and static characters. So these are all things that were missing, I felt like, in the beginning. So I'm starting to feel a little bit more grounded. And um, I'm, so I'm getting a feel for the writer's style. The pacing, I would say, is very slow. It is very detail-oriented. What I am enjoying is that there is a lot of the culture and the traditions being covered and brought to life. Um, but just, I'm going to caveat from the small percent of the book I have read thus far. For me right now, I'm going to guess this is going to end up being a three-star read. I think it's a good book, um, but I do think that the pacing is off, and I don't know if that's in the translation. Um, not faulting the translator, but I don't know if that's something that if I was reading in, its, in Japanese in its original language, I would experience the pacing the same. I am always very curious about that with translated books. But for an English reader. I would say this is a slower read. From the little bit I read so far, though, I would definitely recommend this book to people that are fans of um, that, that the culture and the history um, between Korea and Japan. Uh, but just let them know, I would caveat, this one is going to be, I'm not going to say text, like, like a textbook, like reading a textbook. I don't think it's quite there, but I would prepare for that reading experience of more lift with less, um, it's it's like that gra easy gratification, you know, we get with the entertainment, so less entertainment. So that being said, I don't know if you've guessed, my hope, my hope for the winner tomorrow is Avenues by Train. This is the one I am, fingers crossed, that is my hope for the winner tomorrow. Um, my runner up <laughs> is Of Cattle and Men. So phenomenal books. Absolutely loved the both of these. If either of these win, I will be so happy. If one of the other three win, I will. I, I, I'm very respectful, of course, of the judges and their decisions. But this is one that will make me so intellectually curious. I will want to read what the judges said, why they picked that one for the winner. And then I may even have to go back in just like to purposely see, okay, this book wasn't for me, but can I find what the judges saw in it? Because I, because if these were all like three to four star reads, I would, or even five, obviously, but if these were all highly rated books for me, but the fact that I had such a varied experience with them, I will be surprised if it's one of the other three. So for me, I'm, I think I may delve back in um, just to see if I can uncover it more as like an intellectual exercise. Is that weird? 
probably, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, so that is it. So fingers crossed, Avenues by Train or of Cattle and Men tomorrow. We will see. I will follow up with you and let you know. And then other than that, if you have a hopeful winner, if you've read the short list or just from hearing what I've said, um, if there is one that you find most interesting that you may go and pick up, let me know below. I'd love to hear what you all are drawn to, what you're reading, and then what your thoughts are. Um, and other than that, thank you as always for being a part of my literary life. Now, let's go read some more books. Happy reading.